Yeah, so on an average day, you know, I'll either wake up super early because I'm working on a pitch or writing down ideas or writing a treatment for a show or going to the office with, with the guys. Um, or I wake up at noon, I roll out of bed, I spend about 15 minutes scratching randomly. We'll just see, what, see what's feeling. You know, you never know how the body's going to react. Then I go to some hot room yoga. Then I go back home and I just pull open a Chrome browser incognito and just start with the usuals. I'll hit a pink lab, a UJIS, a red tube, a fantasty.cc. Uh, Pornhub, YouPorn, a green cactus, an XM.XX, um, Hamster Snuff, Snuffs a lot, Snur Snuffleupagus, Snuffin Meisters. Um, there's a lot of snuff. There's a whole lot of Kevin Pereira of Player versus Pain. Woo! Yeah, there we go. There we go. Just take, just let it ride. Let it ride. As long as you guys want to. As long as you guys want to, I'm here. I'm the last one clapping. Player versus Pain is a an awesome new web series that Super Creative is doing with Machinima. Uh, it's a very simple concept. Two gamers playing a video game against each other while being tortured. I don't know what the, this is the gamers they're playing and then I don't know how to do the torture that is not that's not appropriate censor that I don't know how to do the torture with my hands but the thing is they're playing video games while being tortured so what does that mean that means we've got guys on waxing tables playing Tetris and when someone clears five lines they lose a Tetris shaped strip out of their hairy backs and or thighs or asses well actually all of the guys at Super Creative we actually met at an S&M dungeon in downtown Los Angeles and so Right away, we knew that, okay, we love flogs, we love paddles, we love leather, we love studs. How can we get someone else to pay for us to wear this gear and to hit each other with it? And so we came to Machinima, we pitched them on the idea. Turns out they're crazy freaks as well. And so lo and behold, we're now doing torturous things. So waxing was a no-brainer. Gamers are a pretty hairy sort. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the, the Wii Tennis with tennis ball launchers firing 80 mile an hour tennis balls at your genitals. That was just random inspiration. Um, the being flogged while playing Mortal Kombat and shocked with collars, again, that harkens back to our days of meeting in CD clubs. Um, I think the one that, that surprised us the most was the paintball while playing Halo. We had two gamers playing Halo deathmatch against each other and professional uh, paintball rifle guys behind the cameras and they would just unload every time you got killed in the game. And of all the tortures, I mean, people get shot with paintballs every day. They do it for sport. They do it for fun. But this was the only torture that ended up with people on the ground, huddled over themselves, crying, actually in pain. Um, there's a great moment where these uh, uh, two uh, very attractive female gamers were playing uh, rock band against each other. You had me at hello, right? Like, I'll watch that web video. I don't care what it is. There's two gorgeous women playing rock band. However... We decided to up the ante and we put electro stim pads on their arms and on some of their legs at times and so we would shock them. It's that thing in therapy that will make your, your arms sort of quake a little bit. And uh, yeah, and so they were getting shocked so hard that they were dropping the rock band controllers and every time they'd miss a serious note or they drop their controller, a dominatrix would be behind them hitting them with a paddle or flogging them. And so afterwards, they were just covered in... I mean, they look like Courtney Love from the waist down. It was just welts and bruises and sadness. It was amazing. Everything you love about video games. Kill shots. Special moves. And co-op play. It's all right here. Time for some unfriendly competition. Player versus pain. This is gonna hurt. Only on the Cinema Prime. All kidding aside, the torture aspect of the show, while our gamers are experiencing pain, um, most of them actually enjoyed it. And that doesn't mean that they're masochistic by any stretch. I mean, they were just, they were sort of in it to prove that they could take that punishment, you know, and there was this playful one-upsmanship bet between each other, but we were very, very safe. We had EMTs on site. Um, everything was tested thoroughly. We knew that 
Uh, nobody should be put in any undue, unnecessary harm. Like I said, the only punishment where someone was actually really, really hurt, or I think experienced any real, real pain, was when they took a paintball to a very sensitive region uh, during Halo. So, um, thankfully, <laughs> lawsuits pending. <laughs> Everybody had a good time. Smiles and laughs. Nobody got hurt. Nobody. Um, you know, machinima is killing it. Uh, the, 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 the days of IPTV, the, the whole notion that there's television and then there's internet, those are, those are gone. I mean, they're, they're quickly blurring, and in five to seven years, even your grandparents won't know how their content is making it, up, making it to whatever screen they're watching. And so machinima is on the forefront of that. I mean, they've got so many channels. They're diversified. They're edgy. They're willing to take risks. Uh, they have budgets. That's amazing in the web world. You know, normally it's, you want to make a show? Great. Here's a flip cam and uh, here's a, a, a light off my grandmother's nightstand. Have fun. But they really get ideas. They champion them. They encourage it. They like people to push things to, toward, towards the edge. And with a series like Player vs. Pain, you have to be edgy. You can't half-ass it. Uh, I, you know, I'm very fortunate to have a really awesome and motivated fan base from Attack of the Show. Um, and they're a very specific fan base, which is why I was so excited to do Player vs. Pain. I think a lot of the guys that, that love the content from Attack, and the, the women as well, they're going to gravitate towards what we're doing with Player vs. Pain. But um, it's been a weird journey since leaving Attack. We, uh, super creative, we did a show for Sci-Fi called Viral Video Showdown, where YouTubers competed against each other, and I somehow tripped and fell into the awesome gig of hosting a game show for telepictures called Let's Ask America, which is... At, you, on one end of the spectrum, there's the S&M and the torture of player versus pain. On the other end of the spectrum, there's me uh, speaking to housewives in Cincinnati hosting a game show. And so I've been sort of straddling both worlds for the last few months, and it's really fascinating to watch new Twitter followers come in and new Facebook page requests come in from, like, you know, moms with soccer vans that are prepping Capri Suns for their kids after the big game, and dudes who are like, yeah, man, shock her more, and, uh, you know, pull her pants down just a little bit. I mean, what, I mean whatever it is, there's the, I have the dichotomy. I have the spectrum of fans, and it's been, uh, like, a real blast to be able to cater to both sides of that. can come from anywhere and that's truly like it for inspiration for anything can come from anywhere you know and and the the beauty of, of working with super creative and coming up with properties is that we we sit around and if we find ourselves in the middle of having a good time or really enjoying something whether it's a discussion or, or an experience we then take a step back and go okay wait a minute if we're enjoying this so much will other people Okay, if other people will, then what's the best way to present this experience to somebody? Can we make a series out of it? Can we make a web series out of it? You know, the other day at the driving range, uh, <laughs> you're not supposed to admit to this when you're in the driving range, but when the little guy comes out in the cart to pick up all the golf balls that have been hit, every, it's like the unspoken thing, but everybody there is hoping to hit that motherfucker. It's the best thing in the world, right? You've got a moving target. He's used to it. He's got his earbuds in. He's fine. But when you hear that golf ball hit off that metal cage there's a little bit of satisfaction, right? A couple droplets a year and come out, everybody gets excited, we're all on the same page here, but no one talks about it. And we said, if this is the moment that we live for at the driving range, how can we turn this into something? And we started coming up with the idea of turning uh, a driving range into a shooting gallery with big moving targets and you know, metal things and glasses that you can break and you know, things that you can shatter and give people points and let people spin those points. Who knows if it'll ever become a series or a show or whatever, but that's an example of being in the moment, having so much fun and realizing, oh, this is a fun thing. How can we take this to the next level? How can we make this a game or make it something that's enjoyable for other people to watch? I, I got started because I, I ran an internet service provider. So, um, you know, back in the day of dial-up internet, I know some people still dial up to maybe someone's watching this now on AOL or Earthlink or whatever, but um, we created an internet provider because there wasn't one in Northern California. And so me and my business partner, we started it, grew it to few thousand customers and we had all this bandwidth and bandwidth at the time was really expensive. Servers were expensive. Doing video like this was really cost prohibitive. It, it really required some, some resources. Well, we had them. So what I did was I sat down and I was like, okay, I've got these servers. I've got this bandwidth. What can I do with it? And Real Audio had just come out with a, uh, an encoder that lets you encode your voice. And then eventually they came to video. So I launched a daily web series. It was called Pointless Audio. Uh, 
grew into pointless video or pointless television, and every day I did a show, sometimes live, uh, you know, 10 to 20 minutes a day. Uh, we took callers, we did interviews, I talked about games, I reviewed gadgets, I gave uh, tutorials on how to hack people, on how to you know, break into their email or crash their instant messenger or their ICQ. It was ran really, really random stuff. I did prank phone calls. Uh, most of it still exists somewhere on the internet. The majority of it is incredibly embarrassing. But um, that's what I did uh, when I was probably about 13 or 14, and that grew into everything that I'm doing today. And you still do some. You still do something similar, but pointless. Uh... Yeah, I recently launched. Uh, you know, the world needed another podcast. I was listening to the cries. There weren't enough podcasts, <laughs> so I decided to do one as well. And I remember I was sitting down uh, at the studio, and they're like, "So what are we going to call this thing? We were about to go live. We didn't have a name. We certainly didn't have a logo. We had nothing. We were just going to sit down and chat." And I was like, "Well, the, used, the old one used to be called Pointless Audio." This has video, let's just call it pointless. And now that has grown into a thing now that is, you can grab it on iTunes and grab it on Stitcher and watch it on YouTube, but uh, I'm having a blast with it. You know, it's, it's really fun to just sit down and have conversations with people. Hey everybody, this is Kevin Pereira. I'm the founder of Super Creative. Please check us out at supercreative.tv. You can also check out Player vs. Pain over at machinima.com. And to read the full interview and to see the photo shoot and all the madness that happened here today, check out newmediarockstars.com. Also, fantasty.cc. Pull it up, do it incognito, make sure the parents are at the grocery store.